Hey guys, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe so that I can keep bringing content to y'all. At CEO Hajin's house, the morning awakening was marked by the arrival of the mother who urgently called her to get ready and attend school. In a hurry, Hajin got up and ran to her dressing table, ready to set out in search of her beloved Lim Sechun. Without even taking a bite of food or a drink of water, the young woman left her home and headed at full speed towards her destination. However, when she arrived at Sejin's house and rang the bell, she was greeted by Sejin's father, who informed her that Sejin had left without waiting for her. With a heart full of anger, Hajin ran in search of him and found him walking aimlessly. Without thinking twice, the young woman jumped on him and applied a stranglehold she had learned in her jiu-jitsu classes. This sport was her great passion and, on the way to the institute, she tried to convince Sejin to join her. However, Sejin was a plump and lazy young man who preferred to spend hours playing with his mobile phone instead of exercising or learning to defend himself. At the institute, Sejin encountered the typical school bully, Jun Siak, who was harassing one of his classmates, demanding money. Despite the desperate pleas of the young man that he had not a single cent, the bully did not stop in his threatening words, howling with rage while also demanding the sweet red bean bread. The irony of the situation was that, despite being in the dust, the young man had been clear about his lack of fortune, but greed and brutality had blinded the bully. With a cruel blow, the bully hit him in the face, while insulting the young man for telling his problems. The injustice of the scene was unbearable for Sejin, who impulsively, without thinking twice, rose from his desk and with a determined gesture, took a red bean sweet bread from his backpack to insert it aggressively into the face of bully Jun Siok. But this action, far from calming the bully's rage, made him explode, immediately rising to beat Sejin without ceasing. However, his blows seemed useless, as if he were attacking a stone statue. Suddenly, Hajin entered the class, attracted by Sejin's presence. Upon finding out what had happened, he didn't hesitate to pounce on Jun Siok and punish him with a beating he would never forget. To not be mocked in front of the whole class, Jun Siok's excuse regarding this incident was to say he was caught off guard. It's ridiculous, but the real problems started to arrive from here. To defend himself, this mini-bully could only call his older brother to take action the next day at school. Quickly, a kid told Sejin to go to Hajin's class because something had happened there. When he arrived, he found Hajin covered in ink from a trap. This made Sejin angry and he immediately went to find the culprits, who were obviously Jun Siok and his older brother Lee Gi Siok, along with some lackeys. Sejin only asked for an apology and for them to fix her uniform. But they continued to mock her which resulted in Sejin beating them all, except for Lee Gi Siok. When Hajin arrived, she kicked him and the fight continued, but this time with Hajin and Lee Gi. Hajin used the submission hold and nearly broke his arm, causing him to surrender. After this, two important things happened. The bullies wouldn't let this go and on the way out of the school to the jiu-jitsu training, Sejin argued with Hajin, causing her to go alone to training and him to leave home angry. Already commented on his bed, Sejin couldn't understand how he could have gotten angry with Hajin. He quickly regretted and fell asleep hoping for the next day to come and see her again. But something in the night would change, as his father woke him up to tell him something very serious had happened. Hajin had been hospitalized, with serious injuries to her brain and knee. Barefoot and sweating, Sejin rushed to the hospital to inquire about her condition and learn more about what had happened. He was later interrogated by the Criminal Affairs Department, informing the police about the two potential suspects, Jun and Lee Gisiak. After the successful operation, it was necessary for Hajin to see a psychiatrist for potential psychological damage. A few days later, the police informed Sejin that Jun and Li Gi Siak were innocent. Sejin took justice into his own hands and waited for them at a place they used to frequent. Although he attacked, Sejin was easily overpowered by Yuni. He couldn't handle Gi Siak either, who also knew jujitsu, and was overcome by a submission hold, with Gi Siak threatening to break his bones like he did to Hajin. On the brink of being finished, a mysterious person appeared without a shirt to tell Ligi that he wouldn't let go now. He released it, but not because the mysterious person told him to, but rather because this mysterious person was calling the police. This person was named Jason Hayo, who saved Sejin from certain death and was a friend of Hajin at the Jiu-Jitsu gym. He had a premonition that Jun and Ligi were not guilty of putting Hajin in a coma. He gave Sejin a paper with an offer to join the Jiu-Jitsu gym, telling him that to win at chess, one must first know how to play the game. The next day, Sejin, still unsure, stood in front of the gym door, debating whether to enter or not. When some employees appeared behind him and forced him inside, Jason Hyam, the mysterious person from the other day, was there and explained to the employees who he was. Meanwhile, as the instructor and Sejin were discussing the price, the man in charge of marketing had the brilliant idea to offer him a totally free enrollment. The purpose was to use Sejin as an example for others, subjecting him to an extreme diet of only chicken, cucumber, water, and endless training for more than three hours a day, so that after three months he would be formidable and thus make people want to join the gym to fill it up again, as it currently lacked customers. The idea was approved by all present, except Sejin, who was not very happy but who cared about his opinion. He's just the protagonist. After three months of training, Sejin had achieved an amazing physique and two stripes on his jiu-jitsu belt. The stripes don't mean he lost weight but rather that he advanced to another belt level. 
During a strength training with Jason, Sejin was asked about Hajin. Little was known after 13 days in a coma, but when Sejin went to visit her at the hospital, she gave him a look that meant she wanted nothing to do with him, so he left and didn't return. The next thing he found out was that due to the psychological problems caused by the incident, her family decided to move to a new neighborhood to be closer to specialized psychiatrists. Jason also asked him if he would take revenge, to which Sejin replied with a resounding yes. Vacation was over and it was time to return to school, where the same bullies were waiting to extort money from the weaker students. The plan was to trap them in the bathroom and make them give up their money. Jen had the school's weaklings cornered in the bathroom, waiting for his older brother, who was absent because an important person had called him to the roof of the school. Meanwhile, Jun was trying to extort money from the weaklings, but then Sejin entered the bathroom, and while intimidating the bullies, he left a message to be delivered to Leaky. I want my revenge. Sejin quickly heads to the roof. From the beginning it was a plot orchestrated by Sejin to lure Leaky to the roof and take advantage of his absence to defeat Jun, then defeat him and the two of them in the roof. A battle would start where with the learning of not only Jiu-Jitsu but also martial arts, Sejin would have all the chances to win unless Li Gi tries to make him feel bad for not answering the calls. This caused Sejin to lower his guard for a moment, the perfect opportunity for Li Gi to kick him in the genitals and take control of the fight. But it didn't last long, Sejin counterattacked and realized this guy was unable to defeat Hajin. So the guilty party wasn't him. He also knew something about what had happened. So he kept pressuring him until he finally told what he knew. It turned out there was a meeting with students from different schools and Hajin was taken there. He finally gave a name, Sun Du Hyun, which Sejin had to investigate. But before that, he had to face a stern reprimand and possible impulsion for being caught in the roof by a teacher. In the director's office, a small argument would arise between Lee's parents and Sejin's father. By the way, Lee's parents were typical people who always looked down on you, thinking they were better than anyone. Simply by exercising a high position of power in this small squabble, they repeatedly replied with things like, do you know who I am? as if anyone cared. In the end, Ligi finally left the hospital and would meet with other bullies, including the boss bully nicknamed Sunbi, who would give him another beating for losing against Sejin and failing to collect money from the bullies. After that, Ligi went to his brother, who was also there, to charge him with collecting the money and bringing the guy who kicked Ligi in the face. Several things would then happen. Sejin mustered the courage to visit Hajin and have coffee with her, and it turned out she wasn't angry. Although the conversation was a bit cold, they didn't talk about anything important. But something did happen that left Sejin stunned. A guy who was at the cafe accidentally closed the door too hard, causing a loud noise, and Hajin had a panic attack. This showed Sejin what to do about it since he was having doubts about his revenge. Back at school, the bully Jun was bullying the same kid from the beginning of the story, who was a bit different. But just then, Sun Du Hyun arrived to stop it and asked Jun who he was. Third year student Sun Du Hyun and Jun knew each other, so the next step was to bring him to that bastard. Apparently, Sun Du Hyun was also the boss bully known as Sunbi. He and Sejin had a brief conversation in the classroom before the teacher arrived. The boss bully's proposal was that if Sejin wanted information, he would first have to collect the money from the bullies who failed to do so. Later Sejin was completely paralyzed and not because he didn't know what to answer, but rather because he felt intimidated by Sun Du Hyun. Sun Du Hyun would give him time to decide until the next day, but the fight between them wouldn't happen the next day but that same day after school while Sejin was heading to the gym to train. Sun Du Hyun would receive a message from his mother telling him not to come home today because she would have to meet with the creditors. So, with nothing to do, he went in search of Sejin to fight with him. Both in the same place, the fight was about to start. In the street, there were no bells but act as if there were, because with the ding-dong, Sejin would receive punches from all sides at a high speed and just when Sun Du Hyun was about to give his last blow to knock him out, Jason appeared putting his face right in the impact area, taking the punch for himself. Despite the punch having so much power and rage, it didn't affect him. After that, Sun Du Hyun intended to leave but the police had already arrived to escort him. Both Sun Du Hyun and Sejin were interrogated. Sejin ended up with the role of the victim and Sun Du Hyun with the role of the attacker, which would prevent him from entering the competition and having a big problem at home. Apparently, the guys with his mother, the creditors, were actually thugs of a higher caliber who were extorting Sun Du Hyun and his mother because of an old debt that his father left behind to prevent them from putting his mother to work in a somewhat dark place. Sun Du Hyun promised the extortionist to pay him next month what he couldn't pay anymore. The truth is that he felt disgust before and now he feels a little disgusted and a little pitiful on the other side of the scene at the Jiu-Jitsu gym where Jason always dressed in poorly dressed and showy clothing. But today he was wearing a suit. He was going to meet an old owner when Jason was already at the meeting place, and while his date arrived late, a guy suddenly appeared out of nowhere saying that some guys were beating his friend in an alley. Quickly, Jason went to see what was happening, but the truth is that nobody was beating anyone. It was simply a trap by Sun Du Hyun and his thugs who wanted to hit him, and when they were about to do so, Jason's date finally arrived. It was a girl named Shin Su Hyun who single-handedly took care of the three thugs there. After that, the girl and Jason went for a walk to talk about the Hajin case because Jason sent Shin Su Hyun to investigate the case, and what she found was quite surprising. 
There were two investigation files. One of the detectives was in charge of the case and another was already completely filed. Clearly, a big fish had planned everything and was behind everything. A few days after several beatings received by Sun Du Hyun, he went to the gym full of bruises, which worried the instructors and especially annoyed the head instructor who warned him that he couldn't use it for revenge and yet he still continued. Jason, who was also training nearby, approached him and asked him if he was really willing to go all the way, to which he replied yes. What happened next was a series of intense training so that Sejin could defeat Sun Du Hyun someday. It was difficult, but in the end Sejin found what he was missing in one of his trainings to defeat Sun Du Hyun in the future. After training and after a long time, he received a call from Hajin, who simply wanted to know how he was and to tell him that she would soon be visiting the old Jiu-Jitsu gym. It was not something she was doing because she wanted to, but rather tasks she had on a list and had to overcome to continue improving her rehabilitation. The day arrived when Sejin was going to show who he was to Sun Du Hyun, so a big fight would start where Sun Du Hyun would first have control. But when he lost his guard, Sejin tackled him quickly and got on top of him, trying to connect punches to his face that wouldn't land because he was well covered. He continued practicing all kinds of locks so that he would uncover his face and knees over his abdomen, causing Sun Du Hyun to lower his guard and Sejin started hitting him hard in the face. But suddenly, when he was about to lose, he started to remember those old moments when there was no extortionist taking away his family's happiness, and with all the anger in the world he began to hit Sejin, leaving him momentarily unconscious. Talking about the king of Rome who the extortionist appears through the door, he appeared when the fight was already nearly finished to ask for more money from Sun Du Hyun. This guy kept extorting and blackmailing to get what he wanted at any cost. Suddenly, there was a flaw in his unconsciousness and he stood up, making a hold through the body of the extortionist while saying not to interfere with his fight. Several things would happen while Sejin was strangling the extortionist, and other lackeys of the extortionist would come to kill Sejin. This would make Sun Duhayan surprisingly defend him and face all the lackeys of the extortionist. The extortionist picked up an iron bar from the floor and hit Sun Du Hyun, while Sejin threw a brick at the extortionist's face. After all this, both Sejin and Sun would have to run as they had never done before, looking for a refuge to try to lose sight of them. The best refuge that would occur to them would be the gym since all their friends were there eating ramen, and they could help them defend themselves. We stayed with Sejin and Sun Du and entered the Jiu Jitsu gym with the intention of hiding from the extortionists. By the way, the boss of these extortionists was named Yu Chang Yol. He already realized where Si Hun and Sun Du could have hidden, so he sent his accomplices to check if there were people in this place. Having confirmed that they were indeed at the gym, all the extortionists began to break in, finding Jason and the rest of the gym's companions. Si Hun and Sun Du were not there or at least were not seen because they had hidden in a separate room. Chang Yol and Jason would have an unpleasant conversation where in the end everything was decided by rock, paper, scissors. If Jason won, the extortionists would leave the gym. If Chang Yol won, Jason would do everything he asked. It's a little sad to play something so important on rock, paper, scissors. On the other hand, in the room Sejin and Sun Du were in, the latter would tell Sejin the truth about what had happened with Hajin. Some schools had secret fights where they would hold a kind of tournament, where each participant had to pay an entrance fee. The more participants, the bigger the prize for the winner. However, the system eventually became corrupted as people started bringing in others who did not want to participate with the intention of getting more money. They received a commission for every participant they brought. Ultimately, what really happened that day was that Jai Sok, one of the bullies and Jun Siok's brother, brought Hajin to the tournament to receive a beating and avenge the beating he received at school. Sun Du was a witness to everything and, although it may sound like an excuse, told Sejin that he left in the middle of the fight because he could not bear to watch such an atrocity. This would cause Sejin to become angry and start hitting Sun Du for having decided to remain silent about such an atrocity. While Sun Du was standing receiving the blows knowing that this was the path he had chosen by allowing it to happen, returning to the rock-paper-scissors game. It was about to start where Jason would say rock-paper or beating on Chang Yol's face, well he didn't say the latter. This made Chang Yol angry and sent all his henchmen to kill him and the two others who were behind trying to overthrow the great Jason but he took them all out while saying he hates gangsters like you. The gangsters wouldn't give up and kept trying to kill Jason and his companions, but this time with weapons, specifically they pulled out knives. Suddenly Sejun and Sun Du came out of the room where they were hiding to also enter the fight. With everyone together in the gym, things were starting to get more interesting. Sejin began to tell Chang Yol that a new client is about to arrive, so it would be better to play with his knife at another time. He ignored these words and finally the new clients arrived. These new clients weren't clients, they were police who had come to arrest them, but these gangsters weren't intimidated, so the police had to use their weapons to control them and thus arrest them. 
but they still weren't enough. With luck, one of these police officers turned out to be one of the detectives handling the Hajin case. He saw the police car in front of the gym and immediately went in with them, helping the police in containing the criminal Chang Yol. They were all taken to the police station. Some ended up in jail, and others like Jason, Sun Du, and Sejin simply went to give statements about what happened. Sejin wanted to find the culprits of what happened to Hajin on his own, without the help of the police, so he forced Sun Du to not say anything. After that, they all went to eat together, and when I say all, I mean all, including Sundu. The enemy now seemed to have turned back into a friend of these. While they were all eating, Sundu would explain the endless debt they had with the gangsters, which he had to perform miracles to pay off every month. But the fees made the debt never decrease. He was garbage. Not only did Sejin say that, but he also called himself that. The good thing about this is that Jason also believed it was trash, but in this case, recyclable trash. With this, Jason committed to pay his debt, but in exchange, he would have to do something. He would have to fix his past mistakes the next day by arriving at school and leaving everyone, including the bullies Junsiok and Jaisok, speechless. Sundu even asked Jaisok for all the money they had been collecting from the school kids all this time, to go one by one and apologize to them and let them know he will return their money as soon as he can. Jaisok, who was there with him, felt deeply embarrassed and shocked, unable to understand why Sundu was doing this so suddenly. He even tried to confront him, but like any rooster without its chickens, he ran away. That same afternoon, Sejin had a date with Hajin. They talked about everything, including the wounds he had been carrying lately. He avoided questions because he didn't want Hajin to find out that he was still behind that altercation. He just wanted to enjoy his time with her, because it was Christmas time and it was a moment to enjoy and not worry about those things. After that day, Sejun and Sun Du would come together again at school where they would be talking about the details of the tournament they had previously discussed. The truth is, Sun Du didn't know much more than that the representatives from each school were carefully selected by someone named Kim, who was the head of the event, and who was being pursued by the police detective at that moment. Both entered the same building and together they got on the elevator. The detective pressed the 20th floor button, but Kim, who was initially going to press for a higher floor, noticed a bad odor and pressed the 19th floor button. When they arrived on the 19th floor, Kim got off and the detective followed, trying to see what Kim was doing. Unfortunately, at that moment, the detective's phone started ringing, causing him to lose sight of Kim for a moment. Kim disappeared. The call that the detective received was also important, as he was being informed that the gangsters had been released, thanks to some high-ranking official, or at least that's what the police thought. In reality, it was not like that when Chang Yol and his accomplices returned to their gangster offices, two people were waiting for them. One was their boss who had not appeared in over 10 years and now did so with the intention of finding out why Chang Yol was still doing these shady business dealings that caused families to suffer through fraudulent contracts that left them in debt for life. The other person was one of our favorite girls, Shin Su Hyun, along with Jason, who were responsible for the gangsters being released from jail so quickly. The goal was for Chang Yol to talk about the contract he had with Sun Du. The problem here is that this person did not want to talk, even came to feel capable of defeating Shin Su in a fight. His arrogance had to be brought down a little. First, with a couple of punches, which were effective but not enough. Secondly, it wouldn't be so nice, because to shut him up, they put two socks in his mouth, one of which hadn't been changed for more than two days, and the other, which belonged to the boss, hadn't been changed for more than five. So imagine if you have to put that in your mouth. To finish the job and bring down Changol's arrogance completely, they broke each of his fingers on his left hand, one by one. To clarify, this type of treatment is fast acting and is not covered by social security. After all of this, Changol finally deigned to speak, giving up all the contracts he had with Sun Du, thus paying off the debt in full. Jason was notified and in turn, he notified Sun Du that his debt was fully paid. Finally, Jason, between tears, locked in the bathroom, told his mother that they would no longer have to worry about the debt. How nice this is. Days later, at night, Sejin asked Sun Du to give him the names of all the schools, or better said, all the students from the different schools that participated in the tournament. Seeing Sejin's intentions clearly, he refused to let him do it alone, so not only did he give him the names, but he also decided to accompany him on his mission. On the other side of the scene, the tournament boss Kim would be talking with the real culprit of what happened with Hajin and the creator, an organizer of the tournament about the detective who was previously pursuing him, as they would have been investigating and realized they were still looking for clues about the Hajin case. Finally, they were also talking about Sejun and Sun Du and the steps they were taking. 
Kim wanted to take action to try to stop them and prevent them from moving forward. But the boss thought it would be good propaganda for his future competitions if Hajin's friend or boyfriend was seeking revenge. So with Sejun and Sundu, they would be hunting down the first bully from other schools, named Jianggu, who was bullying a poor child in a park to take his money. Sejun knocked him out with one punch and left him unconscious on the ground. The next step would be to wake him up and get everything he knows out of him. With Jianggu awake, he started talking and revealing what happened that day. It turns out that the girl was involved in a sort of game or program where everything was being recorded. Although nobody knew where it was going to be broadcast, what they had to do in the game was that people who didn't know anything about jiu-jitsu would face Hajin to see how strong the sport was. The first volunteer would be Kim jong gu who was defeated in seconds and became completely unconscious. By the way, something you're probably wondering is how Hajin ended up in this place. And yes, as I already told you, it was Jisok who brought her to earn a commission for bringing a fighter. But she agreed to go with Jisok because he lied to her saying that Sejun, the boy she liked, was there. When she arrived and realized Sejun wasn't there, she wanted to leave but they blackmailed her saying that if she left they would bring Sejun. They were total damned extortionists. Back to the fights. The second was with someone named Lim Jiang Hyun. What happened in this fight? Jiang Wu wouldn't tell much because during the fight he was still unconscious, but he did see what happened after the fight. It seems that Lim didn't like losing to a girl and started to kick her leg repeatedly even after the fight was over. The third fight was against someone named Lee young Gon who gave Hajin a brutal beating. In fact, in one of her sessions with her psychiatrist for her rehabilitation, she asked that nothing from that day be disclosed because Hajin was very aware of everything that happened, but preferred people to think she didn't remember anything, with a lot of emphasis on Sejun, because if he really found out about everything he would do anything. Well, spoiler, Sejun is already doing it. While jiang -gu continued talking about the fourth opponent who was apparently the CEO of the tournament, Sejun couldn't listen anymore and suddenly took out a brick he was carrying to smash it in his face. But he was prevented from doing so by Sun Du so that he wouldn't regret his imprudent actions in the future. Suddenly, two men appeared as if out of nowhere and kicked jiang -gu in the face, causing him to lose consciousness. These men were Kim, the head of the tournament fighters, and his bodyguard, who had come to inform Sejun that Hajin was not in danger because these bastards had given Lim the fighter who fought against her the location of her house and refused to admit his defeat, wanting revenge. Sejun would have to decide whether to run to her house to protect her or stay to save Sun Du from the grip of Kim's bodyguard. In truth, Sejun didn't think much about it and immediately ran in search of Hajin while Sun Du was being beaten by Kim and his bodyguard. Selling out your companion is nothing but foolishness. Hajin was calmly walking down the street on her way home without knowing that someone named Lim Jiang Hyun was behind her ready to catch her. Fortunately, just before she was caught, her father appeared who had rushed out of the house in search of her because he had a feeling that someone suspicious was following her. She would be surprised to see her father, but he would come up with an excuse so she wouldn't suspect what he was really doing, which was protecting her. As she arrived home, she would receive a call from Sejun, who would be calling to check on her and see if she was safe. It seems that yes for now, since the bully who was pursuing her appeared to have stopped observing which floor exactly Hajin and her father lived on so that he could finish the job in the near future. After calming down, Sejin decided to take a walk around the block with the intention of finding Lim, and as a completely fortuitous encounter while they were walking, they collided. Neither of them knew each other, but Sejun quickly realized from this person's appearance and way of speaking that he was the bully who the boss had sent to catch Hajin. So Sejun quickly started hitting him while talking to him. The bully tried to deceive Sejun by telling him he was mistaken about the person, but the lie didn't hold up and he ended up exposing himself. The fight continued, with the misfortune that this time it was Lim who took charge of the fight, leaving Sejun defeated. While Sejun was lying on the ground and Lim was ready to kill him, the police detective who had been notified by Hajin's father that someone suspicious was following his daughter found them and prevented it from happening. After Lim fled and saved Sejun, the detective spoke with him in the hope that he would give up his desire for revenge, as otherwise, he would have to arrest him in the future. Sejun was clear and concise with his response, telling him that he would tell him everything he knows, but that he is not trying to punish them through legal means. With that said, he said goodbye. The next day, Sejun went to the cinema, obviously not alone, but with Hajin, obviously, who would go to the cinema alone. They would watch a movie where, as expected, the girl would fall asleep, while Sejun, beyond watching the movie, would reflect on how easily he was knocked out yesterday. 
In this reflection, it would be realized that it could not continue this way, and that it had to move on to the next level, facing people at the same level in order to keep improving and becoming stronger. After the movie, Sejin would join the gym, but not alone this time, but with Hajin. Finally, after so much time, she would step back into her jiu-jitsu gym. While everyone greeted each other, Sejin stayed behind to talk to Sundu alone and ask him for a favor. He wanted Sundu to teach him everything he knows about the direct strike, without leaving anything out, since he wanted to improve and become stronger. As for something that is less important and seems to not interest anyone, Sejin also apologized to Sundu for leaving him behind yesterday with the bullies as he went in search of Hajin, while the man was being beaten. At the gym, the only one missing from this party would arrive and that would be Quack Diok, the gym boss, who, thanks to Sundu, we would find out was the best boxer in Korea in the past. A irrelevant fact that no one cares about except Sundu who was the only one obsessed with boxing. By the end of the day, Sejin took Hajin home, where they spent more than 10 laps around the block because Hajin did not want to say goodbye to Sejin yet. During those 10 laps, Sejin would ask her about whether she normally hugged the boys she was close to. Clearly, Hajin would realize that Sejin was terribly jealous. The next day, the real training would start. Like Rocky in his movies before starting an epic fight, Sejin could train being led by Sun Du in endless exercises in order to counter the bullies in the case of Hajin in the future. At night, Lim was trying to capture Hajin again, but failed because Hajin was with her parents. Suddenly, one of the detectives who had been waiting for Lim intercepted him, but Lim tried to escape. However, a car hit them and someone told Lim to quickly get in the car, supposedly it was a messenger from Kim. Lim got in the car thinking he was safe, but in reality it was Jason who had saved him from being arrested. Jason then proceeded to beat Lim and made him understand that he should never approach Hajin again. When Lim returned home, he saw that his teacher was waiting for him. However, instead of listening to her, Lim started arguing with her and even raised his hand to hit her. But Sejin appeared to stop him. Sejin asked the teacher for Lim's address and pretended to be Lim's friend. The plan was for Sejin to go alone, but the teacher followed him because she was also worried about Lim. Lim and Sejin then got into a fight, but the teacher got in the middle to protect Lim. However, instead of thanking her, Lim pushed her against a wall and she became unconscious. Sejin would quickly stop fighting to take an interest in the state of the teacher, a perfect distraction that Lim took advantage of to hit Sejin with a piece of wood on the head. Nevertheless, this devastating attack wouldn't serve any purpose, or actually, it would serve to make Sejin even angrier and confirm that Lim wouldn't have any chance of making a comeback. Sejin finished Lim without any remorse. What Sejin didn't know was that the fight was being recorded and observed by Kim, with the intention of knowing Sejin's potential to include him in the next competition. The next day, a mysterious girl in a school uniform approached Sejin. She was in disguise, actually part of the competition's organizing team, and her intention was to flirt with him. But she didn't know that the real boss of Sejin was behind her, and yes, we're talking about Hajin, who appeared to politely tell Sejin to look for someone his own age and stop flirting with people who already have an owner and are younger, like a true queen of the jungle protecting what is hers. The mysterious girl would resign knowing that she had been clearly humiliated, making it clear that they would never let Sejin and Hajin have a peaceful life. On the other hand, Jason and our favorite extortionist who had been missing for some time would have a meeting where Changle would have found out the exact location of Kim and the CEO of the competition. Thanks to his former addiction, Changle had discovered that the method they used to lure fighters to their tournament was through the dark web and the payments were made through bitcoins. Back at the gym, Sun Du would look different because Jason forced him to wear a jiu-jitsu outfit and practice something that Sun Du initially hated. But as he continued to practice, he started to like it. After the training, he would have a talk with Sejin to define who his next opponent would be, since Lim had already been removed from the list. The next ones would be Lee Younggo and Hang Seong So. 